Hello, welcome to Five Minute It's been a while, so I've been busy. Um, I'm going to do something slightly different today. Um, and you might think I'm doing the Nintendo DS XL, which is what I'm going to use, but it's not what I'm going to be looking at specifically. What I'm going to be looking at is what's inside. It's this little cartridge, which is ZX on DS. Um, if you're a Sinclair Spectrum fan, then this may have been on your radar. The cartridge is actually a revolution for DS cartridge. That's an R4 or R4 DS cartridge, which allows you to run homebrew software on a Nintendo DSi or a Nintendo DS console. I believe they're no longer legal for sale in the UK, but you can pick them up online if you know where to look, and it doesn't take too much searching to find out. So I got hold of one. And on that is installed a Sinclair ZX Spectrum emulator called ZXDS, which is for the um, DS, obviously. And what it does is it turns this console into what I think is probably the perfect Sinclair ZX Spectrum portable emulator. So if you're waiting for, say, the likes of the ZX Vega Plus, which sounds like it's never coming, certainly from my perspective, then this is a perfect alternative. So let's have a look. All we have to do is open it up and switch on. Press the power button. I'll get the stylus out here. And when it boots, um, touch the screen, you get this list of icons and the person that set this up, I don't know whether they're all the same, but the instructions say that you tap this little logo here and it launches whatever it has to launch to basically override Nintendo software. And then you get these three icons. And the one we're interested in is emulators. And this particular cartridge comes with quite a few emulators, but again, we're interested in the Spectrum one, which is at the top here. And if we just tap that, within a couple of seconds, you will see the ZX DS is booting, please wait. And there we go. And we have a fully operational Sinclair ZX Spectrum with the bonus the keyboard in the touchscreen part here. Now, I found the emulator quite hard to use at first, but it is incredibly flexible, and once you get used to it, it does seem to make sense. So for example, if we want to load a game, we have to tap IO over here, and then we go load file, like so. Now you can scroll through the list of games like this if you so wish. I'm gonna go down to Spectrum Games and press A. And you can scroll through the list of games, but you can also do find file here. So let's do that now. Tap find file and we'll look for, say, Manic Miner. I happen to know there's one called Manic Miner. So I'm going to do Manic Miner, press enter. And there's Manic Miner. And I'm just going to press A to load that. And you actually get, I love this, the little loading bars on the screen when it starts, very briefly down here. And within a couple of seconds, there's Manic Miner. And there's the sound that we, we all know and love. Certainly I do. I spent far too many years of my childhood playing this. Now, with Manic Miner, um, it, oh, I just loaded it again. Forgive me. I, I make that mistake quite a lot. I did say that ZXDS can be a little bit confusing to use. Um, the issue there is I pressed A, so I just reloaded the game. Whereas what I should have done is gone back to keyboard and then pressed Enter to start the game. And off we go. Now, this one is actually already set up to use so the keys do exactly what you would expect um, but obviously not all games um, are ready to work this way so you would then have to um, set up the keyboard for the way that you need for the game and, and that's that's the bit that's quite faffy so you would then have to tap controls up here and this is like a keyboard map so you can map controls to the ZX uh, to the Nintendo DS hardware buttons and again I found that quite difficult but, but with a bit of trial and error I got there um, and yeah you know that's it um, I haven't tried setting this up myself as I said I kind of bought it already made but I know that it is possible if you buy the cartridge and get all the bits and pieces but I bought the whole lot for about 70 or 80 quid I can't remember and it's it's probably the best 70 or 80 quid I've ever I've ever spent um, I've spent many happy hours with this so I thought I'd just give you a quick run through, something a little bit different. I know it's not retro, but what it's running is. And that's it for this episode of 5 Minute Retro. And until next time, happy retro.